right, so thanks for tuning in to another episode of Let's Talk Herbs. Um, real quick, I'm not going to be in the car for long. This episode gets a little bit intense, and I use a lot of photos from uh, SampsonPruitt.com, um, which is uh, used to expose, expose the abuse that went on at Slither Inc. Um, so uh, a lot of these photos are going to be very graphic and uh, disturbing. So if you're not into that, I did two things. One, I held my little patternless Colombian rainbow bow amazing the whole time. She's super cute. I hope that she's a good distraction. Um, and, and you can take your mind off all the nastiness a little bit. Um, but two, just look away. Uh, you can put the phone down now um, and just listen to the audio. Uh, that way you're not having to look at the videos if, if uh, graphic animal abuse upsets you. Uh, because it upsets me. Uh, I, I see a lot of it, so at, at a certain point you, you kind of become numb to it, but, but I get it. And some of these pictures, um, they will stay with you. And if you're not ready for that, go ahead and just look away, right? And, and, and listen on, but, but I want you to, to keep listening because uh, there's some good info in here about how to deal with law enforcement and, and getting them on your side to actually report animal abuse. Anyways, check it out. I, I hope this is informative and useful for some people. Hey, so what's up friends and family? My name is Steven Lewis. Uh, welcome to Let's Talk Herps. I'm going to talk about a subject today with my friend Maisie here, a little patternless Colombian rainbow boa. Um, we're going to talk about a subject that's a little bit more serious than usual, so uh, bear with me, okay? And, and we touched on it on, on one of the most recent vlogs as well. Uh, you can go back and see what I'm talking about here when I talked about self-policing the reptile community. But I want to talk about reporting animal abuse. Um, I asked the question, you know, is it ever okay to actually turn in someone for animal abuse? And frankly, I think the answer is yes. But um, there's a lot of confusion about what that is. So I wanted to get into that. Now, one of the most popular places uh, to talk to people in the reptile community is on Facebook. There's something I, I see on there a lot. Um, it is, uh, in recent months, there's, there's been talk about a pretty reputable... Um, infamous, I guess is a better word than reputable, breeder uh, who frankly was accused of animal abuse and the receipts were there, the facts were there, but nothing ever happened. Um, I'm not going to spend much time on that case and, and, and what happened and, and what's going on, um, and I certainly don't want to blame the, the folks who were, were spreading that information because that's not what I'm trying to do. Um, but there are times that uh, in, in this hobby and, and in your life, you may find yourself working uh, for one of these individuals who does something you don't think uh, you agree with, or maybe you have a chance to interact with this person on some other basis and see their collection. Uh, this video is for you. I want you to know what is and what is not animal abuse when it comes to snakes, what you can do about it, and what authorities can do about it, okay? So um, first off, it's, it's awesome that people are paying attention to reptile abuse, um, but we have to ask the question, is airing our dirty laundry the best way to go about it? That's kind of how we, we asked into the last podcast. And um, I, I mean, the guy we were talking about still does have snakes. He's still selling them. People are still doing business with him. Okay, so if you want to report animal abuse, who do you call? First, most animal abuse cases are going to be handled by state laws. There are a few federal, um, but for the most part, it's going to be under your, your state jurisdictions. Um, it may be a city or a municipality uh, or a county code as well, uh, but typically they're going to be enforced uh, by state laws and anything that's going to have any serious consequences is going to be a state law. It's not going to be a city law. Those are just going to be administrative fines and that sort of thing. Look it up. It's real easy. Type into your browser, browser report animal abuse and type in your city. Okay, It'll pop up right there. It'll tell you who to call. If you could use Google, you can report animal abuse. It'll tell you. Now let's actually define what is animal abuse when it comes to reptiles. Okay, Abuse can be caused by an action or inaction like neglect. It's actually not too different from what you would consider abuse for a dog or cat really. Okay, So it's, it's going to revolve around inhumane conditions. Uh, so Maisie here, she lives in a bioactive enclosure. Uh, it's relatively clean, uh, but as you can see right now there is some uh, waste on the rock. I'm going to clean that up. That would not be considered unsanitary, unsanitary or inhumane. Uh, that's just a little accident. Um, stuff like that is, is, is negligible. Um, it needs to be cleaned up and, and we need to take responsibility for um, you know, making sure our cages are clean, but it, it wouldn't be an uh, inhumane excuse me, condition. Um, inhumane conditions would be multiple 
uh, feces. So to the point, especially in a bioactive enclosure or a big complicated enclosure where it's everywhere, littering the floor, you open up the tub and it stinks like poop. That's a big sign that it's inhumane and it just reeks. Sometimes it may just be a fresh one um, that is going to get eaten by the bugs in, in one or two days. Um, if that's the case, you need to reevaluate if that's an actual san uh, sanitary condition. Filthy conditions are, are one condition. Um, if people are cohabitating a king snake with another colubrid um, or another smaller snake that, that the king snake could consume, that would be an inhumane condition without a doubt. Um, adult turtles in 10 gallon tanks uh, with an inch of water or a tank that they can't get out of onto land and they just have to barely hold on to the walls uh, to, to get out so that they don't drown. Um, th those sort of things. Not providing proper care for feeders, so inhumane treatment of feeders, so not feeding them, not providing them water. Um, that's part of it. They have to be given uh, clean bedding, um, they can't be spreading disease, and they have to have food and water and, and appropriate for their, for their size and their species. Visibly sick animals not being treated by a vet, um, which, which is tricky with reptiles. So for instance, I'll, I'll show you on, on Maisie, uh, she's got a, a kink on her spine, right? And, and those of us in the reptile community, we, we understand that um, deformities like this happen. Uh, some animals live full healthy lives with things like that. I've got another snake with just one eye um, and uh, they, they do just fine, okay? They, they eat, they shed, uh, they get full enrichment, they've got UV light. Um, they're, they're doing really good. That's not what we're talking about. We're not talking about an injured snake. Um, we're not even talking about something that is going to be simply treated uh, with standard over-the-counter procedures. So a minor case of scale rot or a minor fungal infection, beginning signs of respiratory infection, these are not things that are gonna get an animal immediately taken. However, if you report to animal control facility that they have sick animals, what they'll do is they'll meet with these individuals and if they assess that, yes, these animals do need veterinary care, they'll either ask the individual if they're treating it. Um, for instance, she had a fungal infection about a year ago. Um, if I didn't take her to a vet, I just kind of picked up on it and pulled her out and put her into a clean environment um, and, and gave her uh, one or two minor treatments of, of over-the-counter products that I just ordered off of Amazon that were easy to get. And, you know, she's fine. She, she cleared up. So uh, I would explain that to the officers and, and they would say, okay, good, keep up. Let's, let's get an update in two weeks, right? And they provide an update and when they see that she's doing better, they move on and they close the case. If it's something like some of the animals we've seen that have big abscesses, they've got respiratory infections so bad that their salivary ducts are, are swollen to high heaven, um, they could barely breathe, and they're in there with a, a male trying to get bred, um, an animal control officer can, in a severe case like that, they can seize the animal. They could say, listen, this is an unhealthy animal and it's clear that it's not getting vet attention for personal reasons, so we're going to take this and all animals. It's just like child abuse. If you take one animal for abuse from a home, you take all the animals. If someone's abusing their chickens on their property, you would take their dogs, you would take their tegus, you would take their lizards, their snakes, all of it. Every single animal on the property, just like child abuse. Okay. Yeah, so, so consider the inhumane living conditions and, and visibly sick animals. Those are things that can be taken away. Uh, Life-threatening conditions. So at-home surgery. Um, is a, is a major, major risk factor. That's something that if you're gonna practice, you need to be able to explain what you're doing to law enforcement. So you need to have some authority and some backup to what you're doing, whether it's a, um, a vet consultant or a medical book or something like that. Uh, otherwise, things like that are gonna need to be seen uh, by a medical doctor. And even then, it's, it's up to the jurisdiction's discretion. They may consider uh, any treatment whatsoever uh, at home uh, illegal. So it's always good to, to check in with your local uh, jurisdiction to see what they actually charge. And then there's uh, potential life-threatening uh, 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 situations. So lizards without UV light is very possibly something that they could um, do the same thing like when they would check up on, on a snake that has, say, like a fungal infection. Say, okay, well, I see that your bearded dragon is, is kept in a 20-gallon tank uh, with just a heat bulb. Uh, you're going to need to add UV light uh, by this weekend, um, and then we're going to come back in... in uh, four weeks to, to see if, if his condition's improved, if he's, uh, or if he's still lethargic and, and not eating. Um, if, if it's an animal that's not eating, then the, that time frame might be more like five days, okay? So um, potential life-threatening situations, life-threatening conditions, um, signs of cruelty, uh, putting snakes in the freezer, especially adult snakes to euthanize them is 
is a good uh, it's good evidence to to gather against someone if, if you're trying to convict them of cruelty um, especially if you've ever seen the images of, of how these animals uh, actually pass away in the freezer it's nasty but that brings me to my next section which is an intention intentional abuse um, sometimes that's the easiest to spot you can tell right away if I took this snake and just chucked her in her cage and hit her let my dog play with her that would be intentional abuse but sometimes that's really difficult to prove unless you have video evidence and you have a witness willing to come forward and say I saw this at this time uh, but retroactively and saying I know he did this but uh, you know I don't have any proof or, or witness of it that's tough to tough to prove what isn't abuse something that you see a lot in, in a lot of the advancing uh, husbandry groups which I love by the way um, it is considering rat keeping abuse now you and I may have differing opinions um, I personally think that uh, if I were to keep my snakes in a uh, rack environment they would atrophy and, and lose um, some cerebral uh, development and uh, physical control and, and especially a girl like her that which she's got a spinal deformity uh, where the way she's gripping on me right now is some of the hardest she's ever gripped now this is a four-year-old Colombian rainbow boa I need to tell you that she's actually pretty small um, she refuses meals bigger than a weaned rat she always has um, She's looking at that tiny little head there anyways. Um, but anyways, she's she's not got a strong muscle tone. Um, her tail doesn't, you can see it doesn't really close around when she's holding on. Um, part of that is because she's tense. So I'm, I'm sorry, Maisie. Uh, but uh, another part is she just never does that. Uh, she doesn't really grab with it. Um, uh, my other rainbow boas will wrap around each and every finger, my hands tight. She's just got the one coil there and that's kind of it. So each snake is different. However, putting her in a rack in a tub with just a, a water dish in there, while I think that would set her back, legally, that's not abuse. That's not something that law enforcement is gonna come in and correct because they're gonna find a snake that has all of its needs met. Uh, it has food, it has water, um, it has shelter and, and security, and its temperatures are correct. And there she goes, she's grabbing a little bit better there. Um, very neat. So again, it's, it's fun to get these snakes out that I haven't seen in a while. Um, and she's one who's really calm and really easy and, and one of my favorites. For my snakes, I, I think they all deserve the ability to do natural behaviors, including most of them are burrowers of some sort, especially when they're younger. So I always give natural substrate. But keeping on paper is certainly not abuse. Um, it's, it's sterile, it's basic, and it's something they've been doing for a long time. But in, even though some people may say that it deprives them of their natural ability, that's not gonna be something that we can report as abuse. Same thing, just using an under tank heater, um, although it doesn't provide the uh, solar radiation, the same levels, um, it's not necessarily gonna be abuse. Uh, however, providing it just for a lizard might be. So you might wanna have to, to check again on that. It's gonna be species specific. Letting your snake bite you on purpose, free handling venomous animals, um, other frowned upon social media posts, uh, while they make us in the hobby look good, it's not gonna get anyone uh, arrested or anyone's animals taken away. Um, in, unless they change laws, right? Which is why we don't play around on social media with stupid posts. It's important to add that social media reports aren't even evidence, for the most part, okay? They're hearsay unless you're the one who made the post about something that you personally saw. Um, and even then, your testimony is gonna be the evidence, not the, the Facebook post. So how do you call in these reports, okay? That's why you turned in, right? Who, Again, go back to Google, how do I report animal abuse? What you wanna do is speak clearly to the letter of the law. You may need to Google animal control laws in my state to know exactly what you're saying. Make them take you seriously, okay? Sometimes animal control officers are as ignorant as the public at large about the reptile husbandry and maybe they don't even care, right? I don't wanna say that, but that's the reality when it comes to reptiles. Some people don't give one shit about these animals. Um, and, and they're in law enforcement, politics, uh, every level, okay? Um, they think they're scary and creepy and they'd rather the case just go away than actually work to solve it. So make sure that you speak clearly to the law and that there is an animal being abused and is their responsibility to enforce those laws, okay? Um, you have to be smart, be professional and make them care and you can't lose your cool. You have to be patient. So. Sometimes we're dealing with uh, officers who, like I said, have no understanding of snakes. They might even be afraid of snakes, right? Because their primary job is going to be dogs. There's a reason why the nickname for animal control officers is dog catcher. Uh, it's because that's primarily what they're catching, not snakes. Maybe if we lived in Australia, um, but it's not the case, right? I, I live in the United States.
you could live in Australia. If you live in Australia, go ahead and comment below. Um, tell me if uh, animal control deals with more snakes down there. It'd be interesting to find out. Give law enforcement details, okay? What exactly did you see? When did you see it? And how is it going to harm the reptile? Again, they may not even understand if you told them that, hey, listen, there's a bearded dragon he's just kept in a fish tank with no lights. They might say, okay, well, is it eating? It's like, no, you don't understand. You know, this is an animal that will die without, uh, you know, vitamin D uh, synthesis. There she goes. Sometimes she'll corkscrew uh, when I get her out long enough. And it, it makes me wonder if the patternless gene or if it's something else to do with her... Um, her kink as well doesn't seem to affect her doesn't that <laughs> I'm sorry girl she just kind of goes upside down sometimes she's not sick uh, we've been tested uh, been to the vet twice uh, to get the x-rays checked to see if they're improving and that sort of thing too and um, she's healthy every time except for the one fungal issue and uh, Anyways, uh, like I said, snakes are, snakes are neat and a little distracting. When an officer does get called out to a neglect case, um, they're often very familiar with what to look for, in, again, in abuse cases of dogs and cats. Uh, but when it comes to snakes, they need to ask for assistance. And if the person they're investigating happens to tell them that they're the most knowledgeable authority on snakes on the planet, and they have a huge facility and they have the, re the sales records to, to back it up, you're gonna to need to come at them with your own facts, probably ahead of time. So if you know that that's the type of person, warn them about the type of person he is too. That's okay. They're gonna make their own assessment and their own judgments of the person, but giving them a warning ahead of time, hey listen, this person's full of crap. They're gonna lie, they're gonna manipulate, they're gonna tell you that what you see is actually not a problem, but it is. Okay, so prepare animal control for that. You may also feel inclined to not turn in an abuser for fear of retaliation. That's understandable. Let me explain something to you about the nature of abusers. That's who they are. That's what they do. They abuse people. You will face retaliation and abuse regardless of what your actions are. That is what abusers do. It's only a matter of time. Protecting them in the name of protecting yourself will not protect you. It won't. If you see something you disagree with, if you're being forced to care for 2,000 animals alone or removing five or six dead snakes from cage every single day uh, while you attempt to clean them, you know something is wrong. You've got to call. If animal control isn't familiar with reptile husbandry with regards to cruelty, I'm working on a follow-up video to this that you can share with them that may help them assess animal cruelty in reptiles versus just subpar husbandry. So it's just gonna be a law enforcement perspective on proper animal husbandry what you can tell law enforcement this is what it's supposed to look like and this is what bad looks like are you still not sure if you should call use this metric if you do nothing will the animal be okay you may have heard that getting law enforcement involved is going to harm our hobby stop shut up no stop absolutely full stop listen to me carefully Getting law enforcement involved will not damage our hobby. What will damage our hobby is ignoring animal abuse. Even worse, supporting animal abuse. What's gonna hurt our hobby is cutting the jaws open of a retic to drain out the pus with a pocket knife in the middle of the day and then just putting it back into its cage to breed with another male. What is gonna kill our industry it's culling, 90% of a clutch that didn't produce the genetic mutations you wanted for a holdback, but you're not ready for your competitors to get their hands on the genetics, and you don't have any use for the babies. Those are the things that are really gonna harm our hobby. Perhaps this time we allow some regulation in the hobby, if it means better lives for captive animals. If we lose the privilege to own them, but they stop being mistreated, you have to ask yourself why that makes you unhappy. If you've made it this far, I'd love to know your thoughts. And you can support this channel by joining my Patreon for as little as $3 a month. It goes a long way to support the program, and you get your name in these sweet credits. That's it, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Uh, I hope this is an issue that you never have to worry about personally. Uh, but if you do, I hope you know who to call at this point. And I know, look, this video was all over the place. I'm sorry about that. You can always reach out to me on Facebook. Uh, I'm, I'm always available. I'd, I'd love to talk to you. Or let's talk herpets at gmail.com. Or the fastest way, like I said, join the Patreon. Anyways, I'll see you next time, guys. I've got more videos planned, uh, a few how-to videos, and, and more interviews as well. So thanks again, as always. Be well. Hope you enjoyed learning something.